Welcome to Sec I C. Uh, finally, this is the one I want. What is Sec I C? We're a city sec. Uh, we're the first chapter of Sec DSM. We are a 501c3 public charity. And uh, who here is this their first time at Sec IC? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Damn, that's a lot. Come grab yeah. a sticker. Yeah, come grab yeah. stickers. We just you know now, you know later. They're fresh. They're brand new. Yeah. They're fresh. <laughs> Freshly minted. Freshly minted. Um, <laughs> yeah. City Sec uh, description there. So disclaimer, we exist as an educational entity. We do not condone any illegal activity. Uh, code of conduct, uh, TLDR, don't be an ass. We determine who's being an ass. Um, if you have any issues, talk to a board member. So uh, business in the front, party in the back. We've got food and drink. Drinks back there in the corner. Food is uh, on the other side of the entryway there. Uh, alcohol is only if you're 21 and over. Um, minor cleanup after yourselves. We've all got, uh, we use disposable stuff, so just make sure you throw your, your trash away. Uh, cans, there's a trash and recycling just outside the door. Uh, bathrooms are to my left, just around the corner. It's probably best to go around that way. Sponsors, Merge. Merge is where we're at. Um, so if you're looking for a co-working place, look up Merge, mergeic.org, or mergeic.com. Merge uh, we do have sponsorship opportunities available, so uh, being a sponsor gets you to, uh, we put your logo up, put your logo up during the intermission slide. Uh, you, can, you can put swag out. Um, you know, get a hold of us if you're looking to sponsor. Tonight's agenda. Um, you'll be shocked to hear we're running late. So we're doing Sec IC 101 right now. We'll do news. And then Nicholas Stark is doing introduction to PF Sense. And Greg, whose last name is Secret, is doing the super, super basic <laughs> intro about the open floor. Next month, uh, we don't have anything finalized or, or um, you know, on, the, on the docket. So uh, come give a talk. Uh, it doesn't have to be, you know, Black Hat, DEF CON, whatever quality you can. You got something cool you want to share with us? Uh, we'd love to hear it. Um, we'd love to have more people come up here and give talks. So it can be 10, 15 minutes. It can be it can be half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour. How long you want to do? We do um, have one for next that reverse panel next month. Is it for sure though? Yep. Okay. All right. So we've got one lined up. Uh, we've got space for one more talk. So we'd love to get uh, some new faces up here. It'd be great to have someone else come up. This is me over here. <laughs> All right, these are your uh, handsome board members. Um, website secic.org. Email us at contact at secic.org. Our Twitter is at sec underscore IC. And our YouTube, we've got a bit.ly link until we get nine more subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our YouTube. If you search secic, we're actually like the second thing that comes up now. I believe we have almost nine members tonight. Yeah. Whom, if they sign up. That's true. So, uh, best way to talk to us is on Slack. Um, as of last night, we had 79 people in the Slack, so it'd be nice to see that number go up too. Uh, go to secic.org. Uh, you can either scroll down or at the banner across the top here, click Slack. It'll take you down to a sign up link. You enter your email, and uh, the robot will get you, in, get you into Slack, and you can come party with us. Upcoming counts. Uh, B-Sides Las Vegas is next month. That's, uh, you know, DEF CON, Black Hat, B-Sides, all that good stuff. Um, I know we're going to have some people, a handful of people going to that. Uh, Sec DSM's got, got a handful, so um, I might be kind of late to, to make arrangements for that one. Um, I know I'm volunteering at B-Sides Las Vegas. Um, I don't know that, or I think they, they're still looking for people. you got to make a 12 12-hour commitment or 18 if you want part of the room block, but it might be too late for that. I think today might have been the cutoff. Um, anyway, if you're interested, uh, go to their website. Uh, GERCON is in September. I know we've got, got a handful going there. And then uh, DerbyCon is in October. There's also one that we don't have up there, which I shudder to mention. It's CornCon, September 7th and 8th in Quad Cities. I just shudder to mention because I think the name. <laughs> Jeez. Corn, 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 cor
<laughs> yeah, we got an events and cons channel yeah. in the Slack. Um, I think we've got a shared one for for like the summer camp stuff. If you're interested in that one, uh, we tend to do shared ones for the other cons too, so they'll pop up closer to cons. All right, I'm next. Financial transparency news and jobs. Okay, so for everybody new uh, tonight, we are a 501c3, so uh, we do uh, what we call financial trans transparency report. It's basically where we're at financially uh, as the organization. As you can see, <coughs> last month, our previous balance was around $1,270. Uh, these were our expenses, uh, basically our typical pizza, ice, uh, drinks, and then we also had an added expense. We were almost uh, out of stickers, so uh, that was another $200. Uh, we did not have a sponsor last month, uh, but we did get $95 in donation, uh, between donations and badges. So that was a uh, total of negative $290, which leaves us uh, currently today uh, at about uh, $980. So if you guys know any uh, companies or anybody that wants to sponsor, just come and find one of us and let us know. All right. Yeah, we do sell patches, uh, five bucks each. Do we have any of those? Well, yeah, we have patches. Okay. Yeah, they're cool. You should well, buy one. They're the best. Okay, news. Man, that's a lot of words. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Recently obtained by Motherboard, Election Systems and Software, also known as ESNS, which is one of the top voting machine makers in the country, admitted to installing PC Anywhere remote connection software to a small number of customers between 2000 and 2006. Um, it's, it's worth mentioning that, uh, I believe, I have way too much written there. Yeah, uh, in 2006, Hackers stole the source code for the PC Anywhere software, although the public didn't learn about this until 2012 when it was released online. So, good things there. Uh, non Carbonac got leaked. So, originally there was an article saying that Carbonac source code was leaked online. Turns out that uh, it wasn't actually Carbonac, but it was a similar uh, financial mal malware that um, also targets Russian financial institutions. Um, number of cool things about it, whoop, wrong way. And of course I wrote way too much on my notes and I don't know how to spell that. But a uh, number of good takeaways. Uh, the, the people that, that wrote this malware were, were uh, knew exactly how the financial software works. They had, part of the leak was, um, was lists of people working at High, uh, high places at these Russian financial institutions. Um, they really had an intimate knowledge of the way the system worked. So uh, it goes to show that, that you know, hackers are out there and they're, they really know these systems really well. And, and they also released targeted, um, they'd released boutique malware. Um, you, could, you could contract with them to, to have it tailored to fit your specific needs. Uh, you know, very, very sophisticated malware. Any thoughts on whether that was insider threat at all, or what's that? Any thoughts on whether that was insider threat? At all? Um, I don't recall reading that. But. This one's kind of fun. Um, a research team from Virginia Tech and the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, along with experts from Microsoft, uh, came up with an improved way to spoof GPS. Uh, previous attempts at spoofing GPS had pretty kind of obvious tells, like you know, turn left while you're going on an interstate. Um, but they came up with a way to actually uh, logically route it. Uh, the article stated that 95% of the participants followed the navigation all the way to the wrong destination. Um, to perform the attack, they created a GPS spoofing device. It cost about $223, and there's a little tiny picture of it right there. Um, it could be attached to the victim's car, or you could drive behind them. Uh, they said it had a meter of about 50, 50 or a range of about 50 meters. Uh, the researchers stressed that the attacks are possible against uh, any GPS road navigation system, including self-driving cars. So, yeah, it was just like SDR and Red 35 with the other things. Yeah, there's like a marketing opportunity. Oh, absolutely. I just didn't drive people to Walmart. <laughs> 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 Microsoft had a hand in the development. Yes. So Here we have a, uh, a an yeah. enterprise or hacker that used Shodan to find. Uh, Previously undis or disclosed vulnerabilities in Netgear routers, 
and pulled out a bunch of uh, military information. Uh, they believed that it was a uh, private computer that was uh, owned by a uh, captain at the Reaper Station at an Air Force Base in Nevada. Uh, pulled down some Predator drone uh, manuals, stuff like that. Was trying to sell them for between $150 and $200 on the dark web. So that's how this guy got caught. Um, he had a number of other military training manuals that nothing classified, but um, you know stuff they don't want out there. But you can find them all on Google. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, big issue here is the apparent lack of security on military personnel computers, which were left open to the web, and uh, the fact that they were using personal computers to access sensitive military documents. Last but not least, uh, a little close to home, uh, two insurance companies have joined together to ask a Cook County judge to order a data security firm to pay $30 million to reimburse the insurers for funds they had to pay out the settler's claim resulting from a data breach. Um, so the insurers are making a claim against the, the company, who was it? Trustwave. Trustwave, Trustwave who, um, who validated that they were PCI compliant. Uh, apparently there were a number of issues in their, uh, in their internal networks that led to them being breached and now the insurance companies are going after Trustwave. So that could, uh, that's kind of a dangerous precedent. So nothing's come of it yet, as far as I could tell. Um, I looked at the news article, it hadn't been updated to say whether uh, any decision had been made. So uh, as of right now, they've just made the claim to the judge. Um, I doubt it'll be successful, but. I believe Trust Wave released a statement essentially saying our style says. Yeah, stuff. yeah. They said, <laughs> they said we, we do this, but we are not guaranteeing you are impenetrable. So. It was pretty, uh, like the article talked to it was pretty obvious, right? Like. The, the crux of it was there was a SQLI that got missed, which anybody could do, but there was like no firewalls in place and they didn't catch that. And yeah. there was like two other really big, like check the box things that they completely whipped on. So yeah, it was kind of... Um, Visa said Trustwave overlooked Heartland's failure to maintain a firewall using vendor supplied defaults for passwords and other security go. parameters, yeah. insufficient protection of stored data, failure to develop and maintain secure systems and applications, Data access restrictions, shortcomings, and failure to assign unique identification to each person with computer access, monitor all access to network resources and cardholder data, and regularly test system, uh, security systems and processes. So, they were pretty trust way. Way. Yeah, trust yeah right? <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out what exactly they were looking at. But. Yeah. Trust way, put your perspective. Here's your Nessus scan. Okay. <laughs> all right, jobs. Anybody have any openings? Anybody looking for a job? Anybody need help jobs? Jerbs. Y'all like your jobs? There's, uh, I think, two or three at Transamerica. Oh, yeah, that's right. There's like a. Yep. You know, I don't think any of the PA guys are here tonight. No. Did, is that one posted in the jobs channel? In the Slack? I don't know. I don't recall if it is or not. There's two of them. There's one for like Transamerica, and then there's one for uh, Aegon Global Technology, which manages like technology for all of the business units. So that's, uh, I think there's two of those out there now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and we do have a jobs channel in the Slack. It's shared with Slack DSM people, so um, another reason to get on the Slack. Yeah. Looks like there's some remote positions open for Redbud, Director of Defensive Cybersecurity Red Team, and Security Engineer and Ops Blue Team if those remote positions. Found on the jobs channel in the Slack. Yeah. Alrighty, talks are up next. Uh, grab some pizza, grab some beer, and next talk will be right up.